The Unshackled Waves, episode 209. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Now, as you know, The Unshackled, we provide a lot of coverage of the Australian Patriot Movement and one of the groups which has gained quite a bit of notoriety is Cook's Convicts, founded by a serial pest of the movement, Neil Erickson. And I'm lucky to be joined finally today (laughs) by the the 2IC of Cook's Convicts, Ricky Turner. <laughs> I, had, everyone. I had to bribe you with beer to Oh yeah, to look today. and I've actually got him on the beers, look. Yeah. See, cheers to that. Beautiful. Cheers. He doesn't like it, but we'll get around to him. Hopefully our listeners can hear the hear the cheers. Maybe I'll add in a sound effect. <laughs> oh, they'll hear it, trust me. I consider it, yeah, checkbook uh, journalism. <laughs> I, I, I paid you for this interview in beers. Technically, yes, and I'll, I'll accept that. It's cold and dry, so it's up there. It's no VB. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's go back to how the Ricky T, the, the Patriot, were, was born. Now, obviously, you've had a wild ride, so how, oh, yeah. how, does, how did it all begin? Actually, it began in, basically, I'd go and see the True Blue crew. They would uh, they'd have their um, oh, stuff out at Mountain Patriot, and well, I'd usually go out there, but I was never really getting to their UP, uh, UPF, which was surprising considering how big it got. I never got to go out there, but then the True Blue crew started jumping on board and doing their thing, and I thought, oh, I'm going to jump onto this. So I used to go to their protests and stuff like that. But actually, the first time I went to uh, Sydney, when they had the protests out there, and I uh, basically met all these new people, Gary Hume, uh, a couple of other people, and yeah, from there on, it just kicked on. I went to the pub with them, everyone was having beers, best people you ever meet. Can you believe that? I thought they would be all extremists and ready to get up and do naughty stuff. Yeah, I don't mind laying my hair down. <laughs> it's, it's fun as. Oi. <laughs> Obviously, you mentioned quite a few patriots there, but you're, you're as I said in my introduction, you're too I see to, to Neil Erickson. Now, <laughs> Correct. Neil has quite the, the checkered reputation within the, the patriot movement, let alone yes, he the, does. The, the public at large. So what attracted you to, to work with Neil? Well, I went to... Uh, Bendigo 3, and I was just going there to support them for what they, their cause and everything about them. So when we got down there, um, for some reason, after the Monday, I think it was Monday after the court, Neil and Jamo said, we're going to storm... George Jamison. George Jamison, yep. And we went to go to, we're going to go to, uh, what's it called? Yarra City Council, because they're trying to ban Australia Day. And I thought... Are you serious? I didn't. I didn't realize that was happening at the time. And Neil's like, "You in?" I said, "Yes." And basically, from there on, there was just at least fifteen of us doing the uh, hit, the hit and miss. And the early, we only went there once, which is disappointing. But after that, we went to Moreland City Council, and we did. We hit that a few times with the Australia Day, and basically saying, "Why are you getting rid of Australia Day? Australia Day is for everyone." Stop living in the past and basically get around Australia for what it is. And that's why we went there. I built a coffin. That, you should be happy yeah. here, run. I, well, I was pretty proud of that. Let's look at some of the footage now. Hey, hey! Don't touch it! Hey, it's a council meeting. Hey, it's not, guys. Morning, council. Anyone can come in here. Don't touch us, mate. Don't touch us. Get out! Get the out! Get the yeah, they certainly looked rattled in that footage. <laughs> yeah, how, how dare us have our opinion in that manner. But the saddest thing is the amount of support we got for that it was unbelievable. Even people on the street like just chatting and that, and they just couldn't believe that it was done behind closed doors. And the only retards you hear are the retards, the left hards. I apologize for retard talk. It was left hards. Yeah, they just basically come out, sprayed us for saying, oh, how dare you, that's racist for having Captain Cook come here and basically make what we have today, a civilization for everyone to do what they want, say what they want, but that's been stripped apart from PC bullshit, but we won't, we'll go into that later. Certainly 
gained a lot of uh, attention and drew attention to these these councils and gave the the left a bit of a taste of their own medicine because they're, they're always trying to interrupt. Yeah, they weren't they weren't very happy about that. They they said, "Why aren't we being arrested?" And I, it just it makes me laugh the fact that it was um, we were allowed to do the protest because it was open night. You can go in there and have your say. We had our say and we left. It's funny how they go out and they will just break any law they can and get away with it, and it just makes me laugh. It's amusing. Now let's look at some of uh, you and Neil's other greatest hits. <laughs> now, uh, you were with Neil that day. He interrupted a refugee rally, let's, <laughs> which we, I consider at the probably the greatest troll of all time. Oh let's yeah, it was pretty. That here. was hilarious. Um, we realised there wasn't enough accommodation. Let's catch up. All of these refugees, they just left. Um, a busload of refugees. They're all rapists. Don't let them in. Don't let them in. They're rapists. Right 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 Boom, that is by far what you showing that. Oh, that's a pisser. <laughs> Neil later on told us the, the full story of that, that there were some leftists who was tackled there and his head split open. A Nazi snatched the microphone while, while people were giving speeches and began to yell a whole lot of horrific shit. Um, he was tackled. Police came in hard, basically fucked up um, a refugee protester. Uh, people are very worried about him. A lot of blood poured out of his head. I didn't know about it at the time, but basically we um, got informed for obviously media and well, I couldn't believe the fact that he's actually trying to throw a couple of punches at the uh, the police and has been taken to the ground and people are saying how dare the police do their job. Well, you're hitting the police officer. Where is it? Where If I was to hit a police officer, do you think I'd be high five? I just, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I was amazed that he was able to get get so close and just grab the microphone <laughs> just like that. I mean, that's obviously never going to happen again because the left now know <laughs> yeah. who he is. How dare that factual person tell us the truth. I hate it. I'm so triggered and I'm very upset. Mm. I imagine, because you saw the people up the, up the front, imagine all the attendees, how triggered they would have been. Well, the fact that they were sitting there like, is this is this a joke? Well, no, it's not a joke. We're just spreading the truth. How dare us? <laughs> I, I did. It's it's up there with one of the best. I and it was. It's actually funny. Did he? Did Neil actually talk about how we got on to actually getting there? Did he actually speak about it? Uh, I think he did. Um, do you want to elaborate? Yeah, on that? we. Um, they were trying to protest against the Liberal Party for some reason. I can't remember details. I've, I've, it was that long ago. But we went there and just stuffed around, taking the piss and that, because we didn't see anyone. As we're walking to the main street where the library in Melbourne, I'm like, where's all the coppers? Well, it was heaps of them. And we asked, they're like, oh, they're having a protest. And I thought, for refugees. And I thought, oh, yeah, sweet. And I thought we were just going to do some interviews. And then he just walked up and done what he does best. And it was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Now, probably what gained you the most uh, inf infamacy uh, was uh, confronting uh, Sam Dastiari in a Melbourne pub. It was yes. you, Neil, and Logan Spaulding. Now, it was Neil that called him a terrorist and a, and a monkey and said that he should go back to Iran. Iran. And yeah, I, I remember you saying, like, oh, can you buy us a beer? China, <laughs> China, China will pay for it. Do you know what? I'll, I'll go into that. I'll dive into it because... Oh, let's have a look at it first. All right, we'll go have a look. Have a look. Have a laugh. <laughs> yeah, I got some money from China, mate. You want some money or what? 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 G'day, mate. I'm here to hey, terrorist, you little monkey. Where are you hook us up some beers, mate? Any Chinese payments tonight? Come on, mate. Free beers on us, eh? I couldn't believe how much like hype there was behind it, and how basically we were scum of the earth. Now, the media put out that we just rocked up to a random pub and just went up to him and just sprayed him like. That's How just, did you know he was going to be there? That's, 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 the, that's the laugh, because the media put out there that, oh, they just rocked up to a pub and just abused a bloke. That's just disrespectful in general. No, he was having a 10, I think it was $10 to get into the, his little event for his Halal certified book. <laughs> that's, that's what he wanted to talk about. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, he is one Halal of the story. <laughs> 
I think he's working on a sequel, one Chow Min of the story. <laughs> I can't wait to go there and uh, have a chat about it again. Mm. It's made of noodle paper. Oh, of I course think. it would be. <laughs> but he, um, yeah, so that's a, we heard about that. So it's a $10 entry. So there was nothing to do with sitting down, having a lovely a dinner break, and we're having a bit of a meal. No. We went there, had our say, and left. Now, I was prepared to say all the things under the sun because the bloke's just a traitor to the nation. He's just throwing us under the bus. And back in the day, he'd been, he would have been put down at the stake, but now we're all PC bullshit. And we've got to give him a pat on the back and say, look, you've done the wrong thing, don't do it again. But when we got into the, um, the university, Footscray, I had no idea what we were doing. We are just totally winging it. So he, he goes, there he is there. I said, sweet, let's go have a chat with him. And I could, I actually didn't really get much in because I was too busy laughing my guts out because just what Neil was saying, I pissed myself. I was trying to be like very straightforward and I'm going to talk to him serious. I couldn't. It was a pisser. And as you said, you were only there for like five minutes. Oh, then, then, that then, about. Then, then you left. And oh, yeah. You didn't touch him or like push him. Oh, I love. Like, like the left <laughs> Well, it's funny because... I uh, went on a current affair and I had uh, an interview about the whole thing and basically the whole time he was spraying me about how racist I was and what he didn't really look into with his little shitty journalist, he didn't really look into the video and say, I didn't say a word. I didn't say one word, but he just couldn't hop up on it. But I just couldn't believe how offended he was because someone come out and give it to a bloke that's actually thrown Australia under the bus Oh, it just, it, you just can't comprehend that. Now, this was a month before he had to resign because there were Correct. more revelations about uh, how he was uh, soliciting donations from uh, Chinese figures and actually tipped one of them off that his phone was being tapped by, by ASIO. <laughs> and so uh, after uh, you guys confronted him, there was this mass outpouring, poor Sam Dastiari, uh, harassed by these <laughs> racists, yet uh, a month later, uh, he, he was gone. I mean, what was? how did you feel after well, that? Well, it's funny this. There was a lot of uh, hatred towards the page, a lot of hate. And... I couldn't believe it. I was just thinking to myself, geez, but slowly but surely, as soon as he got evicted, basically, pst, bugger off. The amount of support I, we got after that was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Like, from the most sprays to people, like, there weren't, like, death threats or anything like that. So obviously, some were, but there was a lot of, like, so disappointing that I support you, Neil. I can't believe you did this. This is, you're taking, like, totally taking it out of the, uh, I just thought... Why is everyone having a go at us? Because all we did was have a couple of words. Like, six and stones, boo-hoo. But the amount of support we got after he got kicked out, saying, you were right, and I can't believe that you were right. Oh, boom. People start waking up and seeing the forest through the trees, and I was absolutely wrapped. That actually people that actually, oh, I'm not really into politics or anything like that, but I was disgusted what you did, and then after he got kicked out, there was a reason behind it. I totally un... 100% backing is 100%. I was absolutely wrapped for it. Yeah, and Neil dubbed himself uh, the Senator Slayer. <laughs> so are you the Senator Slayer's accomplice? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Do you really think that you helped get rid of him? Of course. How, how else couldn't you? No one would have spoke about it. He would have just kept doing it. So do you think you planted in some journal? Oh, line? a lot of seeds. A lot of seeds. A lot of questions were about us and basically mainly Neil. <laughs> but I still throw me five bobs worth in there got him rid of him and i'm absolutely wrapped now that was in november of 2017 uh, in uh, december that was when the the milo Yiannopoulos, uh, event was held in melbourne and you and uh four other uh patriots were involved Correct. in a scuffle with antifa campaign against uh, racism and fascism i don't know how much i can actually talk about it but i can give you the basic uh outcome of it Basically, we went there to support Milo and for supporting free speech. And I didn't realize that you're allowed to get punched up for supporting free speech. Um, won't name names, but being attacked and defending yourself and having to go to court and spend an absolutely ridiculous amount of money to try and prove your innocence that, well, I just went there to defend free speech. And it's funny how the left suck up and they say, but it's a hate speech. It's, it's this, it's that. At the end of the day, free speech is free speech. 
I don't, I, you can say anything you want to me and I can be offended as much as I like, but at the end of the day, people can have their opinions, but yeah, it was a bit disappointing the fact that it took them that long to take us to court and the left didn't charge us, like go to the police station, put a, put their ship forward and we didn't go to the police station, we just, we just let it go. I just, I just couldn't believe it, the build up, and basically they're just trying to shut both of us up because how dare us. Yeah, I mean, it's December 2018 now. It's a year later. The trial yeah, is yeah. set for June next year. That's an 18-month... A lot of money to save. Yeah, uh, that's that's why it's been so difficult <laughs> to get a hold of you. You've been busy working. Oh, I've been working my fanny off. I'm very tired. <laughs> and you have been relatively quiet this year on the, on the scene. Video side, yeah, I haven't really been... I've been really working. I've been basically working from 7 to 7. And it's it's hard to get out and about, and basically I feel I feel a little bit bad that I'm leaving Neil in the dark. Look at what he's doing at the moment, just going out there showing people exactly what's going on instead of the bullshit that you get on the uh, the news. But yeah. Now, when you did all this stuff, you were called Patriot Blue, uh, <laughs> but, and that got you into legal trouble with uh, streaming service Stan, it did. because in their Romper Stomper remake, their Patriot organization <laughs> is called Patriot Blue. So you, you rebranded to uh, <laughs> Cook's Convicts. Neil rang me one day and said, let's make our own name. And I thought, oh, yeah, what do you got in mind? Cook's Convicts. And I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. But you know that uh, Captain Cook didn't have any convicts. They came with Arthur oh, Phillip. Oh, 100%. But it, it makes it funny that people get so triggered that they're so offended by that particular name that they will go out of their way to abuse you. And I didn't realize that until we put it up and put it out there for people to see. <laughs> well, you've also been called Cooked Convicts. Cooked. Well, I'm technically cooked from all the work I've been doing. So how dare me for working too hard. Sorry, everyone. Now, uh, as you mentioned, it's mainly Neil who's been doing most of the, the videos and activism. Yes. But original Cook's Convicts page got deleted. The new one is CC. And yeah, You've correct. been doing just a few live videos when you can. Cannot. Yeah, it's um, like we're not pushing it out there at the moment. I think we had about, I think we had 12,000 people that were just scrapped. And obviously people haven't jumped back on board. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't care. Yeah, Neil put it back up and we got it started again to basically keep the group together because there's a lot of there's a lot of people members in Cooks Convicts that people don't know about and do a lot of work behind the scenes. Most of us haven't had the chance and Neil's been out there basically promoting the page. Well, he's actually promoting his several pages, but <laughs> yeah, he's, got, he's he's got a lot. Oh, he does. They're all good. Mm. They're all different in their way. I think he get. He, he told me, um, keep it to the pages, but I like to go drift a little bit to the side. Now, you and Neil were, were banned from associating with each other when you were initially charged. You got to go on a trip to, to Queensland <laughs> uh, to, uh, together and got up to some uh, interesting <laughs> things <laughs> while you were while you're up there. But you eventually got that lifted in, in June. Correct. You're, you're allowed to associate for the means of uh, lawful political activity. And you told the media you wanted to form the, the Cook's Convicts political party. <laughs> We did, and we we're legit on it, but Neil kind of threw me on the bus. I didn't expect it to be right there and then. And when he just said to the media, this is what's happening, yeah, they got me unaware, which I thought I thought it was a pisser after, but we've revamped that. Have you, have you heard? Yeah, the it's okay to be white part. Oh, yeah, we've ramped it. And it's going to happen. Everyone doesn't think it's going to happen, but we want to push for that to happen. What, what's the manifesto of the it's okay to be white party? We actually haven't even had the chance to sit down and actually give our thoughts and what we're all about. But we've already told our parties and that what, what we're doing and who we're supporting. And I find it um, very clever because I think that we're going to get a lot of support. Because people, a lot of people out there have actually had enough. Well, there's a lot of support for the, the It's Okay to Be White motion oh, yeah. by, by Pauline Hanson. And the federal government, well, they voted for it initially because they believed correctly that it was an anti-racist motion. <laughs> but then they were told, no, it's a, it's a white supremacist motion. Oh, mate. And then they blamed an administrative error. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, I just didn't realise how stupid people really are like me doing this saying it's okay to be white yeah, oh, I had, it as well. oh had, look 
It's okay to be white. Boo hoo. I just, the fact that they think it's like I'm a part of the KKK. No, it's just yeah. okay to be what? The whole thing was started as an idea on for, a 4chan, like, hey, like, why don't we say this? It should be a non-offensive thing. But Correct. Let's see if, and now if, everyone's offended. Yeah. <laughs> it actually makes you... I, I laugh my guts out when we started doing the It's OK signal. I wasn't amongst it because I didn't care enough. But then the amount of hatred the Cooks Convicts crew got from just doing It's OK to be white... Well, I had to be a part of this. That's why me and Neil did the video and asked questions. Is it okay to be white? Then they all come up with, oh, what you're trying to do is push <laughs> they, they always come up with it. I would agree, but, oh, this is like some sinister trick that you're uh, playing on me. Yeah, he, look, how dare me try to say facts. It's okay to be white. When is it not okay? Well, what did you think of Neil at the, the African festival? Because that was a bit far for me. For you, it was far? I thought... Because it, it was a cultural festival. It wasn't a political rally. No, right? look, fair enough. I um, I didn't go. Didn't want to be a part of it because I'd rather sit back and just watch. Me and Neil have so same way of thinking, but at the same time, he has his ways, I've got mine. But I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with it whatsoever. Like, let's be honest, a bloke saying it's okay to be white on stage. Is it really that big of a deal in my thoughts? No, not at all. The community just attacked him. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. He was reposting all the messages and comments. Oh. He was getting all the, the death threats. Yeah, but they obviously don't know what laughter is. Like, the only thing I think that he would have upset him with the Apex um, Festival, <laughs> <laughs> I, I pissed myself because it's a joke at the end of the day. And they've taken that joke and used it, that same same dribble that I hear day in, day out, the racist, that word, when, when we be, finally become Prime Minister, me and Neil... We'll be getting rid of that word racist. That's anti-white in our books. Neil's got a... I don't think he'd pass section 44. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see. We might have to change his name. Maybe his gender as well. All right. <laughs> Obviously, as I mentioned, Neil has a bit of a frosty relationship with other patriot groups. But you, you're a you're urine man. You like to bridge the, the divide. You Well, yeah, I, I don't feel like attacking anyone. Everyone's got their own way, ways of doing things. There's... There's no right and wrong. And a lot of people, um, when you get into the movement and basically want to be a patriot and love your country and how dare anyone try to disrespect our country, diggers the Anzac, uh, for the Anzacs, uh, Australian flag, and the fact that everyone's got their, their just so mindset and just they don't think outside the box, but that's fine. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I saw you did a video with uh, Blair at the the lads clubhouse. Yeah. You get along with them. Yeah, I get along with everyone. I don't. I love everyone. Everyone's. They think at the end of the day, we all think a lot. You you love your country, and it's like um, a pettiness. I just can't be bothered. I just it's it's all drama for me. I just I literally just go whatever. Like if they were to come out and start spraying me and say nah, Rick's no good, and give their opinion, I I really wouldn't care at all. Well, one person that you and Neil have had quite the back and forth with is uh, Avi Yemeni. <laughs> Yemenin. Uh, Yemenin. <laughs> he, when he was on Neil Mitchell's program, he was called Avi Yemeni. Which was, <laughs> it, 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 it would have been a rap with that. So it started earlier in the year when, when Avi well, wasn't sure who he would fight for, Australia or uh, Israel. I did. I will start off my opinion. I don't have anything against the bloke whatsoever, but when we put that question to him, and it was that hard to basically answer. Even I, because Neil said to me, he's no good. He's about himself. He couldn't give a rat's ass about anyone else. He's just about himself. And I said, no, he's all right. He's, he's basically doing things that other people aren't doing. He's for the movement. He's for Australia. And Neil said, no, nah, you make your own opinion, which I already told him, yeah, I will be. But like you say, it's hard not to see that he's about himself. The bloke is just 100% about himself. And I noticed that when he started bagging us all out but anyone that was with uh with the movement it just yeah they're no good just come up with words all that crap like it, me doing this interview he wouldn't know who i am or give a rat's ass i actually went to shake the bloke's hand and i find it disrespectful if i shake your hand what do you do oh, look see that he just looked me in the eye well when harvey did it he did this oh yeah that's really bad and uh, look i don't you don't have to sit there and get on your knees for me but 
a simple handshake, eye to eye contact. I don't think that's a big deal. That that's where I, where I had my doubts when I first met him, but I let it go as as you do, and as you saw that me, Neil and everyone else was sort of getting pushed out of the the arena because it was all about Harvey. I don't disagree with everything he does, but at the same time, well, at the end of the day. Who are you literally going to fight for? It's just, just a simple question. We're going to go out there and fight Israel. It doesn't, and you're going to pick a side at the end of the day. It's just as simple as that. It, hypothetical. It's the people, he couldn't answer it. So I thought that was a bit uh, interesting. Now it flared up again this tension when uh, Avi ran for uh, state parliament under the Australian Liberty Alliance, and uh, in the the North Metro region, ALA was uh, preferencing the Victorian Socialists above the the Liberal Party. Yes. Now I didn't believe it. Neil rang me up and said, "You've got to see these come over," and he showed me. And I just I just couldn't comprehend what they have done. They just basically bringing their enemy to the, yep, no worries, we're mates. All because they were so uh, saddened and petty about Liberal putting them last. They're a nobody at the end of the day. Most of us are nobodies. But the people that love their country will know exactly who we are. And to get all pettiness with putting the Liberals last and basically supporting that, I just thought there's something terribly wrong with them. And also that uh, Liberal candidate for union, Marion Klein, I mean, stitching her up with that, that yeah. interview and then criticising her afterwards, I didn't like that. Yeah, I thought that was a bit out of character. I thought that just, which is, that's when I knew, just me, me, me. I just, mm. I mean, he, he got back on track after <laughs> after that to a, to a degree. I mean, that... He, no. And he, and he couldn't help but respond to, to you and Neil. He, he published the, <laughs> the photo of Neil doing the, the Nazi salute from... Oh, my... Back. It's funny how we all get called Nazis. Do you know what I tell people? You're a Nazi. I laugh. I just said, I couldn't give a rat's ass about the Nazis. They got beat. They lo they're losers. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. be... I don't want to be a part of that group. Mm. And obviously, Neil's past, he was... But he obviously saw the light that they're basically one-minded and they don't see for the forest or the trees. Now he's got an open mind. He sees exactly what's going on. Now I told Neil, we're going to be bigger, better, best when our party's uprising. Now, obviously during the, the state election campaign, you and Neil advocated for a vote for, for Liberal. Correct. Uh, Daniel Andrews won a second term uh, in a landslide. Ugh. We've got um, four, four more years of his uh, premiership. He's emboldened with an increased uh, majority now. How's life going to be for you, do you think? Because well, do it's... you think you'll be seeing <laughs> there's that new fixated person's unit uh that they've opened up and also the one of the assistant commissioners said we've got to be uh mindful now of uh, politically motivated violence correct and did you see that he said we're going to make sure that right wing we're going to make sure we target them did you see he said that yeah the bloke is a socialist piece of shit it's as simple as that if he was watching right now i would put him in a corner with the amount of stuff i've got to say with him and i reckon he i would make a grown man cry and it'd be so <laughs> pathetic and good to me because it shows how weak he is. But mate, he is no good. And people, just because you build a couple of things doesn't make you special. Simple as that. But he, he's no good. He's, he's. I, I want to talk about a thousand things, but no, nah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Now, as you mentioned, you've been pretty quiet this year, but it's December, Australia Day is uh, not too far oh, yeah. away, and of course, the uh, the left, they have their, their annual, well, it's not change the date anymore, now, it, it came to, to, it's now abolish the date. And oh, it's really? Of course, there's that um, Interesting. Tarnese Onus Williams, who's just like, abolish Australia. <laughs> so that's, how, that's where they've got, they've gone from change the date to abolish the date to abolish Australia. <laughs> how sad... Is it that they just can't move with the times? They want to talk about, oh, it's 2018, get with the times. They're still living in the past. And they literally just can't let anything go. If it's going to affect any of, like, the family or loving your country or just... they just got to put their crap out there to put it down. And it just does me head in. There are so many people that go, why do they just so... They just don't understand... It's about Australia. You're involved. We're involved. Everyone's involved. It's about us. And I just find it disgusting that they they can't accept that 
move of the times, we're the times, basically. Yeah, it's been good that there's the supporters of Australia Day have been. Oh yeah, they've been, they've been. It's been good. Yeah. A lot of commu- I went to last year. I went because I, I think the True Blue crew had a barbecue. Yeah, but we're on bail, so I couldn't go. I went down to William Sound Beach, and there was so many. Uh, every there was so many people there. It was actually grass, and every single one of them had an Australian flag, and it made me proud to be around, just having a barbie, just having a beer. And that's all. It's all about. Just relaxing, enjoying your country for what it is, and the diggers that fought for our country, and you respect them, and I find it disrespectful for anyone to burn the Australian flag or have a go at the diggers. I find it disgusting. Yeah, too right. Well, Ricky, I'm glad that you finally made it into the studio for uh, a chat. Uh, all the best for, obviously, the upcoming trial, but hopefully we get to see a bit more of your uh, activity online. and <laughs> Hopefully it pops up, yeah. Well, I'll say it to everyone out there. I hope this offends you. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Take that. (laughs) All right, everybody, that's the show for today. A reminder, our annual Unshackler Awards for 2018 are now open for voting. We have 10 award categories with 10 nominees in each, with the winners announced on Australia Day by our senior editor, Damien Ferry. Voting is open for the Regressive, Patriot and Unshackler of the Year categories, so make sure you go over to the unshackled.net slash unshackler awards to have your say. Don't forget, there are three major Australian tours happening in February 2019. There is the Deplorables Tour, which still hopes to feature Gavin McGuinness, Tommy Robinson and Milo Yiannopoulos, hosted by Penthouse Australia. Then there is Dr Jordan Peterson's return to Australia with special guest Dave Rubin and Dr Stephen Hicks's first visit to Australia, hosted by True Arrow Events. So far, we are surviving the Patreon purge. You can still pledge to us at patreon.com slash the unshackled and directly via our PayPal link at paypal.me slash the unshackled. We also have our premium membership option on our website, which is the unshackled.net slash support options slash premium membership. Another way to support our work is by buying some right thinking merchandise over at uprightmarket.com. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.